Hey there, Lee. This is your lesson video. Sorry, it took me a minute to send it to you. We are working on bar chord stuff, um, as well as reassessing um, some single note picking technique and how you're going to approach not using a pick. Um, you may find, actually, that using a pick for this song for Creep will be easier than trying to use it for strumming because it is pretty easy to just go I'm hitting notes whereas this big old plastic thing is, is, is cumbersome so I'm going to encourage you to actually try the pick or fake pick um, but we're going to see the limitations that come up doing it. Um, creep is really going to show off uh, notes that aren't being fretted correctly because we're hitting single notes um, and has more advanced concepts in it. So the first thing I had given you was just um, a strumming pattern where we were going. shape chord this is a and you know pause your video go back over your note names if it's seeming at all elusive that you know g c a d that's um recognize how easy it is to learn that task uh, just assigning this is part g this is part c uh, try not to think about it too much um but give yourself a random geography test on it like which one's c which one's a random order if you like, you can add the seventh fret. We have dots at three, five, seven. Got B, E right there. Bonus notes if you like. So we're playing our E, you know, all of our bar chords are based on E shapes. Like I'm playing E, E major. And then playing F is the same thing. Same shape, and I'm just the human capo. And then if I want to play F minor, make it into an E minor shape which a couple times you want to do this or it's just you know if you just start with regular bar chord it'll be pretty up and just take your middle finger off same thing as this or this or this um cool and to clarify we would never actually play e this way i'm just doing that so you can see the shape moves um cool and then there are a type bar chords a looks like this and the correlate bar chord is the flop down your ring finger, bend it the wrong way one. That's a little higher de degree of difficulty than some of the others. And then, you know, making that A look like A minor, which is something you will, you definitely want to do right now. Just go A, A minor, try to ignore which fingers you're using and realize that it's just A is, and A minor is. So all that changed is, Otherwise, it's all the same. However, we're figuring this out. It makes sense. They're similar chords, just like E and E minor. Also, so B, the bar chord, this is B. So we want to use one of our landmarks. And then C minor. Now I'm making my A minor shape. So just like in first position where E major and A minor are the same shape, playing up the neck, it goes major, minor, you know, when, we, when we move up and down. Moving side to side, everything keeps the same sound. But when we move down, we include the B string that's tuned differently, and things change up accordingly. Power chords, fine, fine, not so. Yeah, that's why we're using um, you know, A shapes and E shapes and other reasons. But yeah, that, the, it can be visually confusing for people that major and minor are the same shape or on different strings. Uh, we talked about some technique details like uh, you know being up a little higher and making sure that you're fretting with this portion of your finger, uh, not just bending at this knuckle, which is where we do a lot of playing, but it's almost impossible to do from position we're going to be in good classical thumb position dead in the middle and that's how we play bar chords 
you know, pretty much when do we use this thumb position bar chords and stuff with reaches in it. That's, that are impossible in this position whatsoever. A bar chord, literally impossible. Reaching, literally impossible. So otherwise we tend to just kind of play like in a clutch regular position. But yeah, all right, great. So we're going. So I'm going playing, playing, clicking, clicking. I'm just going one and two and three and four and. And like we see, the bar chords are really easy to make the click sound with. You just stop pushing down and maintain the shape. What's more, the first two chords in the song are the same shape. So let's just make this section one and don't move on. And so, you know, I would say actually just stop right now and work on going here here one attempt focused pause in between attempts not going like this and hoping to get better at it just having five or ten attempts where you finish the actual hardest part of this which is you know moving between bar chords uh, and then you'll actually have adequate focus excuse me adequate focus to put on your uh, strumming hands we're definitely working with both equally in this song and in creep also so yeah uh the strumming pattern i'm playing is just down up down up down up down up and it's playing playing clicking clicking and then i'm really going to encourage you to stop playing those two chords and pretend there's a new song that starts at the third chord that just goes pause another attempt don't loop it don't hit that song but the part of your brain is just start losing very normal inclination. Um, so yeah, that's F sharp minor, F sharp minor, D e minor shape, and then B using that A shape. So that's A, C sharp minor, F sharp minor. Mixed one in there where instead of down, up, down, up, I went down, down, up, down, down, up. So you can try that. Only difference is down, down, up, click, up, click, up, rather than down, up, down, up. Slight difference. If you learn one, switch to the other, it should be um, almost effortless. Just take a couple minutes, to, uh, literally this time, as all you're doing is going, okay, instead of. I'm gonna go. It's the kind of thing you can get on the first try. Cool. So there's our first song, and uh, we've worked on moving left hand changes. Uh, you could include a step where you just go and realize that it's not important for the notes to ring out long in this song, as we're actually using the clicking time to switch between chords. That's part of why the artist chose in songs like this to go. Because it gives you time to move. You can be clicking and moving and the same thing happens. So yeah. All right, let me give Creep a listen since we were trying to get that note to know. But before we do so, um, the thing that's going to be an issue with playing this finger style is that our finger style setup, I mean, like, again, we can reinvent a way to do it with five fingers and pick with one of your left hand fingers. Or something. But what we usually do, 99% of us, uh, are use these three fingers, not my pinky, not my thumb, but these three on adjacent strings like we've talked about before, and then thumb moving around these guys moving as a unit. And this particular song won't allow for any one position, going like a... unless you just like sat here and then moved your ring finger around, which would be a really unusual thing to do. Uh, so I was encouraging you to use fake pick like that if you're just using your first finger so it has some sense of down up. But I am going to suggest you actually try using a pick for this, recognizing that what was difficult, what was most off-putting about using a pick for you 
was the strumming portion and then using it as a tool for lead guitar which you know really there's only certain there's certain things that can only be done okay using alternate picking like playing fast eventually there's no way for me to go with all downs or, you know, we just don't move that fast uh, we actually start playing fast it would be this down up situation same with strumming but either way i'm going to use a, a pick and that's what we talked about is our, our down up choices are based on mm, the following note you know i'm on my way down so i go down i'm on my way down so i go down i'm on my way up so i go up like if I was doing that, the first four notes, I'm going down, 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 excuse me, down, down, up, down. Let me get this up and listen to it. And then we can do it like we did on Friday. Okay. Um, if you want to make a note, it was about 11.15 in your video when we started doing the actual song. Yes, I can. Um, cool, so uh, here we are playing Creep. It's going to be all E-shaped bar chords. Um, and we can see when they play it that that's how it's handled, which means we're not going to move down. We're going to be at the third fret, which is a G bar chord. Then we're going to move from G A B to B. B major, then one fret up from B is C, and then we make it into C minor, not C flat, C minor, just minor shape. So, first three are the same shape, and then you just take your finger off literally. Cool. So, we go. Cool. So, that's going these two. Each time we're going, here's three notes. The first three go. So if we were going down farther, we'd go down, down, down. But since we're on our way back up to the bass string, like we were talking about a second ago, we're going to be going down, down, up, down. If I wanted to extend it to the next one, that goes. I'd be going. So that's it, we just need to, if we imagine that being faster, we'd actually have to be up. Anyway, there we are. So down, down, up, down, down. That's what we'll start with, which is that. Three identical things, aside from we're hitting a different string, and we see what presents the problem. Um, on guitar, uh, finger style, I guess the, the best we could do would be thumb thumb rest but it's just kind of not really designed to be played that way and the sound of it there i just switched to using fake pick and it starts to sound more like the song it doesn't really go so yeah there's there's a thing to examine is, uh, is it, it wasn't really just strumming with the pick that uh, was off-putting and you know now we're doing a new thing maybe try it again as a that doing it the other way doesn't make a ton of sense. All right, so we get next. So we just went dum 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 dum. Excuse me. So we started on that last note. Fred. We notice there's a little pause there, you know. He did, boom, boom, move. You can actually give that time you move duration, you know. Move. So yeah, you'll definitely need to work on that. Make sure your thumb moves correctly. The bar chord should seem easier up here. Uh, it's easier to put down. Press the closer together. If it is seeming more difficult, chances are your thumb's back to normal, um, or has crept up as you've moved up the neck. 
which is a thing that a lot of people do. Um, cool, so let's see what we do on this B chord, the second chord in that song. For starters, something we do with bar chords pretty often is take our pinky off and find where to put it. Right now we're playing at the seventh fret, seventh and ninth fret, seventh and ninth. The thing I just did is at the ninth fret on the dots. And in the song we do it on the one, two, third string. And you're gonna have to get from here to here and back really fast. We don't need to have worry about how it sounds when you strum it because we're going to be picking single notes. So it's like you can do that versus if we were like trying to figure out. So we go. So that was this, this, this. Excuse me. And then unlike the previous one, now we start on the fifth. So that went. I think something almost identical happened. Uh, this one. Yeah, identical actually. Which makes a really strong argument for just do the first two chords, pausing after each attempt, and don't even do the third chord until you're good at the C. Because it's going to be the same thing. And it'll be distracting to try to do it in a large dose when you could really not even play the first chord and just go B. And realize that you've just learned the next chord also. You know, all it is is one fret higher, but the parts that are hard are literally the same. Literally the same. Cool. Uh, so the chords went G, B, C. And now C minor. Cool. So let's see if we play some C minor. Okay. So yeah, this will really test your positioning that we need to get very clearly. And that's the hard note to get with your first finger. So just make sure your knuckle is not on top of the third string. Need to be either up higher or finding a position where you're not right there in one of your knuckles on top of the screen. It, it, it's a very small change, uh, you know, that much tiniest bit that we're talking about. Cool. And again, that was uh, excuse me. Awesome. So that was us. Here, 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 here. I guess I could try the whole thing. One, two, three. Close enough. And then after the, when we get to the chorus, it's the same chords. So you can just rock out the same chords. Um, at that point, if you, you, know, you can do it, you can do the whole thing here too. And the reason that he doesn't is that one and this one having to do so much of that successfully. So there we are. That's what's going on in Creep. And
and uh, there are some barcode uh, knowledge based things. Learning note names is essential and it's the classic non task. It only seems like there's something to it. Just start with four, learn them, add a couple more. Um, there's no intellectual component. We're just giving this name, this dot, the name D, and it's all good. And we want to find D sharp, just go one higher, be that way forever. All right, sir. Cheers. I'll see you in two weeks at your normal time.